Call the meeting to order. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Here. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Next item will be the statement by the board vice president, Mr. Steve Majors. As we begin this meeting, let us pause for a 60 second moment of silence to reflect, meditate, pray, or engage in any other silent activity. Thank you. Next item will be the Pledge of Allegiance led by Cheryl Kelly, the Deputy Board Clerk. <laughs> Next item will be the adoption of the agenda. Any so, questions? So Sorry. moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Next item will be the discussion and vote on the December 10th board meeting minutes. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Next <laughs> item, number six, Ms. James? It's not Ms. James. <laughs> or Mr. James? S. James. It says S. James. Good evening, President Allen and the board. Um, it is my privilege this evening to introduce um, a young lady who's going to introduce some awards that our teachers have been given. Um, Heather Goodenough is going to be stepping up here in a minute, and many of you know her. A lot of you have had your children in her class, so I can't even begin to speak of how well and great of a teacher she is. The exciting part is for the past six years, she's been an instructional specialist for us. So not only does she do great things every day in our district, but she also is an ambassador for Broken Arrow. She is actually on the board of the Oklahoma Council for Social Studies. So at every meeting, she's there uh, doing what needs to be done, sharing the things that need to happen in social studies that affect our students daily. Also, she's a member of the Oklahoma Social Studies Supervisors Association. So as I said, she's out representing us and we couldn't ask for a better person to represent us. So at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Ms. Heather Goodenough to introduce our next star recipients. The Oklahoma Council for the Social Studies Board of Directors recognizes teachers every year that encourage their students to develop a love of social studies through inquiry, innovation, and engaging instruction by awarding five different awards each year. The Mike Atkins Memorial Friends of Social Studies Award, the Clara Looper Memorial Rising Star Award, the Social Studies Elementary, Middle School, and High School Teachers of the Year Awards. This year, the Broken Arrow Public Schools were very well represented. Nicole Gorbett was awarded the Social Studies Middle School Teacher of the Year Award, and Amy Presley was awarded the High School Teacher of the Year Award. Both ladies have been, um, been and continue to be leaders in their buildings at the district, the state, and even the national levels. They are lifelong learners and are continuing their educations and currently pursuing postgraduate degrees. Nicole is a sixth grade world geography teacher at Children's Middle School. She is currently the department lead and actively participates in curriculum alignment meetings and is a valued member of our Open Educational Resource Committee and, and as well represented as at the district level, I'm sorry, as well as represents the district at the state level on several <laughs> committees. 
Amy is a high school East Asia modern world history and AP world history teacher at the Broken Arrow High School. She is an active leader in her professional learning community and has been working on the updated state standards and is most recently presented at the National Social Studies Conference this past November. Nicole and Amy are rock stars and integral members of our BAPS team, and congrats to them both. This is Nicole, and this is Amy. And these Great are teachers job. of the year. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. I'd like to say something to both of you, please. Uh, I want to thank you on behalf of, uh, obviously, I'm just one board member, but I know how important it is to have fantastic teachers who represent Broken Arrow Public Schools, not only in our community, but out beyond that, outside the classroom. It's so important. And I know there are so many times that teachers do the hard work each and every day, and they don't get recognized for it. So on behalf of uh, all of us up here, uh, not only is it important to acknowledge that, but it's important to let you know how important you are to the success of our students. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, number seven, Mr. Perry and Mr. Dias. <laughs> well, it's been proven that any strong school district is backed by a very strong board and here at broken arrow we know we've got five individuals that um, there's no hidden agendas from the five of you it, we have five people that truly care about public education passionate about it the decisions you make are um, all in the best interest of our students and teachers and our um, employees of the district. I know you work tireless, tirelessly behind the scenes. A lot of people don't see the work that you do and the phone calls that you take. And I know the public uh, thinks highly of you in um, the way that you represent Broken Arrow Public Schools. And as part of uh, the Board Appreciation Week, we just want you to realize that, how much you're appreciated from a district standpoint and um, appreciate the way that you continue to push us and hold us accountable every day. We know you challenge us and we're very thankful we have five people that um, are, are such great representatives of Broken Arrow Public Schools. And I just would like you. to echo what Mr. Perry said, um, and especially from the site's perspective, um, you know, you do a great job representing all of our students and our teachers and our principals. Um, we get excellent feedback. We appreciate your support. And I will tell you, I've been a volunteer, never in this capacity, and it's the hardest job I ever had. It's really hard to volunteer. I know that. So we really appreciate your time. And <laughs> when I was in a building and as a parent, I had no idea how many hours you guys spend doing this volunteer work. It's a full-time job. So we greatly appreciate all you do for us. And, and it's all about our students. So thank you very much. And as you can see, just one of our representations, Legion Park, um, <laughs> brought, had, had this sent in to you guys because even though I mean, you may not always hear it, um, you are definitely impacting our students in a positive way. And we really greatly appreciate you. So Mr. Perry has something else to talk about. No, Dr. Dunlop is out um, of the state in a conference. So she wished she could be here tonight, but we do have a little surprise for you. We've got some gifts to show our appreciation um, for your time and service to the board. You're going to pay us double? Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the fun part, we would like for you to open these right now. Oh, uh, and um, Kind of like Dirty Santa. I know. No, we hope, we hope there's some uh, good things in there that you will... Um, enjoy and just small token of our appreciation mr perry Ms. dice and everyone here first i want to say it's an honor but, but mostly it's, it's a great privilege to be able to sit up here and do this um it's the uh, greatest best most rewarding non-paying job i've ever had <laughs> so uh and uh even if it did pay, um, it, it's still the most rewarding thing I've ever done. So, and, and thank you guys for making it making it fun. 
So, oh. an appreciation. We've got some uh, miniature gold ball replica trophies. And oh, we... Uh, Photogenic yeah, we need, moment. We, <laughs> and you some... Know, uh, really <laughs> it really is. I mean, in all honesty, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. But most of the time, more than, more than most, it's, it's rewarding, gratifying. And it's, you know, we've been through a lot. I have been through the last seven years with the district, you know, and the games and everything that's happened. And I think right now you guys are doing a great job. I think we're on the right path. I feel good about it. I sleep better at night. I get phone calls, but I know they're getting taken care of. Carly knows that. Uh, so, thank you mm -hmm. very much. I would... Well, we'd definitely, like, we'd definitely like. thank you guys. Okay. I, I was just going to say, I, you know, I, absolutely everything they said, I, I want to say ditto to that. But you know what? You guys make this job easier. You make it fun. You make it great for us. And honestly, I mean, you guys are the ones that really do the biggest part of the lift, in my opinion. And I, I want you to know that I appreciate it, the information, the work you do, and then just the sheer passion I mean just a, a great example is the two teachers that just got recognized and you know it touches my heart seeing the you know the things that come from the different schools and the students that you know these little kids that bring it here and even the big kids but um, seriously <laughs> thank you for all the years that I mean we are in great times right now and it's time to celebrate some of these things and recognize the greatness that we continue to do so appreciate you guys uh, let me just make a couple of comments. Um, I would like to say that there's no greater re reward than serving others. Um, I would say that this is very, very, uh, a very nice thing to get, especially given the fact that I'll be rotating off the board, uh, knowing that uh, over so many years since 1903, we've never won a state championship in football. That's not the only thing. We have so much good going on in the district <laughs> and we all know when we're involved in the trenches that's a reason that things get done but obviously without good leadership without serving with some really quality people that cannot get done and i appreciate very much the the lead that all of us take at given different times but service service to others is the most important thing appreciate that Love okay. these trophies. They're going to get some mileage. I've got a lot of uh, Jinx and Union <laughs> folks in my <laughs> You know, I've been a public servant for a long time, but there has really not been anything more rewarding than what I've been a part of this past year. And being a part of a, a team that I see in front of me and out in the school system is unreal because we do. We make a great impact on these kids' lives, and it's always what's first. And no matter what decisions we make, it's always about – providing opportunities and developing kids for life. And I really feel like we have done a great job this past year. And it's, it is, it's nice to come and see everybody passionate about doing that. And I don't get that all the time. And, but I look forward to coming and working and doing these things. It does take a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it is rewarding to get out there and see the impact that is, is actually taking place in the community with these kids' lives and creating opportunities that'll be forever for them. So thank you guys for what you do, because you do it great. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Thank Perry, you. Yes. I'm sorry, one more thing. I'd like to, you know, the perception sometimes is a, the elected board or the so-called bosses, but I think what makes our makes it work for our board, our leadership. We're all a team and, and we have a job. The district staff have a job. As long as we understand we're a team that not one person is greater than the organization, I think we're going to be okay and we're going to continue to do great things. And I hope as we all rotate off the board that future boards will understand that, that even the board is not bigger than the organization and that we are a team and we should work together as a team and continue, continue the success we have had and we want in the future for our kids. So that's how we're yeah. gonna get there working together. That's right. We, we do have a lookout all times and when you guys show up, it's we got a code word for, for <laughs> everything. Get everything but, Eagles in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Starts with an O and ends in an S or something. <laughs> no, um, 
kudos to uh, Coach uh, Alexander could not be here tonight, but uh, part Amen. of that from, from his uh, Gold Ball State Championship yeah, team. Awesome. But thank, thank you all on, on behalf of Dr. Dunlop, too, and uh, her leadership. So You guys you. make it great, so thank, thank you. you. Yeah, can we get you to have a good picture? Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, next item number seven. Miss James, you up again? You're okay. You're just on the clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. I get it. I'm about to get one of these, Mr. Cockle. I apologize, and this is exciting stuff here too. It's almost embarrassing to talk about, but um, we were donated owl pellets. Um, for us, it kind of sounds like a weird thing. It's almost up to like $5,000. It's very expensive. We use it through six through 12 in our science classrooms. They're able to dissect it and see what the owls have eaten. I'm not a science person, <laughs> but they tell me, Becky Morales tell me that this is a really great thing. But it is exciting <laughs> when we have <laughs> yeah, um, individuals come in and, and donate <clears throat> at this level with the owl pellets. In addition, they also gave us some uh, edu educational teacher kits that they could use in that. And that came to like a total of $13,000. So we um, are so appreciative anytime any outside group or partnership or wants to donate and contribute. So we just wanted to recognize that. So thank you. Thank you. We need to we need we need vote on that. Yeah. Uh, move okay. to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Please call the roll. Um, Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next item number nine, Ms. Dias. <clears throat> well, I get to share some other great news this evening. Um, so, you know, we had a unique situation at Oneida Ridge middle school this year uh, the principal mr hefner took a job opportunity in new york and so that left an open principal's position um, in the middle of the year which is unique for us so we had a committee and did interviews and we are recommending tonight um, mr michael sagely for the position he has been one of our assistant principals of all of our middle school um, he has served as a teacher in claremore he has some other experience um, in texas as a grad assistant, but he just comes to us with so much enthusiasm and passion. It's a unique situation because he did get to start second semester waiting for final board approval, um, and the feedback we've gotten has been amazing. Just so positive. He's so excited to be there with the students and the staff, and so at this evening, I'd like to recommend him for the position of Oneida Ridge Principal. Cool. So if we don't make the motion, it's going to be He's going to be a sad man, and he's got his, he's got his sweet little children here Where's with he him. Where's he at? <laughs> make a motion to approve. Okay. Just he's sitting close we'll to the We'll get that door. out of the way. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Is he here? Can you yes, he's up? here. So would you like to introduce your family, Mr. Sagely? <laughs> Boomer Sooner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so this, this is my first of three bosses. This is Allison. Uh, she's uh, a kindergartner this year, and she, she almost said she's got shy. Um, this is Emma, uh, our, our three-year-old, and, and she uh, spends her time with a rotation of uh, grandma's houses and, and great aunt's houses. So she's she, she's got a pretty good gig going. Um, <laughs> my wife Michelle is a, is a fifth-grade elementary teacher uh, at a neighborhood elementary school. Uh, I just wanted to say to all of you, just thank you so much. Um, just hearing what you all just talked about and you spoke about, 
um, is, is really such a great representation uh, of this organization. It's a pretty large organization, <laughs> but you wouldn't know it culturally. Uh, it's a very friendly place. Uh, it's a very welcoming place uh, where people will really bend over backwards to help you and support you. And as I look across and see <coughs> faces that I've, I've come to know over the last couple of years, uh, it's, it's just um, really just impressive and, and amazing how, how much support and help people have offered in just the last couple of weeks. Um, really the whole time I've been here, but really, and I, I particularly want to thank Miss James and, and Miss Dice who have just have gone above and beyond um, to help me and, nice. and, and make me feel uh, welcome and somewhat ready. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm very excited to get going, and, and I just want to say thank you all very, very much. We are so thankful and grateful to, to be a part of this organization. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, next item, comments from the, from the public. We have none. Item 11, Mr. Perry. They better hurry. <laughs> Good evening. Um, if you recall this past fall, um, if you recall this last fall, we reviewed our strategic plan and when we did that, our athletic director, Steve Dunn, was not yet in place. He is now in place as the athletic director. So uh, when we get ready to start going through the strategic plan, Miss Knight and Mr. Dunn will go through that. And he's excited to get involved in that part of the process. Before I turn it over to him, though, I did want to, um, so much of our strategic plan is about engagement, student engagement. And some things, I go to the OSSA board meeting every month. And one of the things that they are working on right now that I'm very excited about that I think is going to be really good for our students, going to be good for the kids in the state, is they're working on what's called an emerging uh, sports policy and procedures. So basically, when someone comes in, currently, for the last, at least since I've been here, the last 20-some years, the, the OSSA has been very resistant when it comes to adding a new sport. And I think with the new leadership, uh, David Jackson, I think they're more open and more gauged towards engagement. And uh, I think that this is going to be a great thing for our kids down the road is they get a chance when they currently what happens, somebody will walk into Mr. Dunn's office and say, Mr. Dunn, I think we need to start this sport. We've got a lot of kids playing this in club. And he's going to say, along with any athletic director across state, that, well, I don't think we can add that because it's not sanctioned by the OSSA. We really can't add that sport. And what happens is they don't normally go to the OSSA, but if they do, they don't get anywhere. And by having this written down, a procedure and policy in place, it's going to be a really a good thing for our, our kids in, in the future. And they will look back and say, it doesn't just get lost and thrown to the back. So this is going to be a good thing. Um, also, just real quick, wanted to mention that the OSSA is doing some other things that I think are really encouraging and from an engagement standpoint. But I'm going to let Mr. Dunn talk about that. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Knight uh, for the rest of the strategic plan. feel really short without my heels, so I'm going to stand on my toes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we were uh, given the task of taking a look at Action Plan 2.1 and 2.11, and in our department we decided that we were going to establish a plan to connect every student um, to a co-curricular co or a student mentoring program, and in the world of athletics we were trying to determine what that was going to look like, so in our first year, some of the things that we accomplished were our football team getting involved with our community or youth teams, going out to practices, um, being able to establish a, a common language or a vernacular when it comes to our football teams. And then we were also, um, they uh, held clinics for the coaching staff for the youth teams. So um, not only are we building engagement we're also building that collaboration with our youth teams the girls basketball team also we noticed that their numbers were uh, slightly down so our girls basketball coaches held free clinics where 81 girls received free t-shirts and learned new skills and we've seen a growth in our um, numbers and particip participation this year in girls basketball as a result our boys and girls tennis teams put on a clinic for 32 first through sixth graders and introduce them to the sport of tennis 
and we hope to keep growing that. And then uh, we plan to do more free clinics this year with the Tigettes. I know um, Mr. Dunn's going to speak about track and things that we're going to do in the future with that as well. Also, uh, 2.1.1 in year one, we um, took a look at developing and implementing a comprehensive plan to in increase the engagement opportunities for all students, but in order to do that, we needed to know what they were interested in. So a uh, part of the uh, Title IX requirement is that we survey our students every so often to gauge their interest. We've done that in 2016. Uh, previously, we did it in 2014. We have a new one that we've rolled out, and we're so excited that all the kids have Chromebooks, so we'll be able to hopefully implement that maybe on virtual day um, so that the kids can get online and take this survey. And we're also tied to a few um, engagement questions that are not related to athletics to kind of figure out where are our kids involved. If they're not in athletics, are they in fine arts? Are they um, in other extracurricular activities. So we look forward to getting the feedback from that. But um, what we did was with the 2016 information, we um, added two seventh grade volleyball teams because of the immense amount of interest in volleyball. And that has, has proven to be very um, exciting for our kids. And we've seen the interest continue to grow. Um, girls basketball allowed seventh graders to try out for the team and participate with the eighth grade team and then we also did that with cheer we brought up 13 seventh grade cheerleaders to compete with our junior high program and we're going to continue to look at these different avenues of getting more students involved maybe at the lower level um, because we do have the ability to do that under the OSSAA guidelines it's, uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> looking at year two for action plans 2.1 and 2.11 um, more along the same lines, how do we reach the younger kids in the district to get them involved at a, at a young age? I um, think that's very important. As you look at the youth levels in different sports, there's been a decline across the country. And so we've got to be very strategic and intentional about how we grow those programs at younger levels. And then we'll see that trend as they age through our program. Um, to continue along those lines, our basketball coaches, um, our players, our PE uh, teachers at the elementary level, they're going to put on a basketball unit in March. Uh, that will include some three versus three um, tournament bracket type um, games. And, and they're going to have six nights of elementary girls and boys basketball at the high school that our coaches will put on with our student athletes, so a chance to connect the two and kind of have some vertical alignment. Um, and they'll have that three on three uh, pickup tournament in April. Um, we're also very excited. Mr. Ellis met with every single elementary uh, physical education teacher about an elementary wide track meet. It's going to take place in April on the 13th. Um, very excited about that. Third, fourth, fifth grade. You know, they'll have about six events and we're going to try to get as many kids cool. involved in that meet as we can. That's one of those sports that can be pretty big. You can have a roster of 100, 150, 200 kids and the more kids we have, the more teams we can put together and go to meets all across the state. So um, that's a really um, exciting uh, thing that we're going to do this spring that's going to be fun to gauge the interest level of those elementary kids. 2.1.1 uh, in year two this year. Um, as Mrs. Knight stated, we have surveyed our students based on their interests and kind of what they're looking for, what they would like to see in, a, in an emerging sport. Um, we'll get that out this spring with, um, with the Chromebooks and try to get a really good response from all of our students in the secondary level. Um, and to develop a tracking system, how many kids do we have? What's the trend of the last three, four, five years? Are we growing programs? What do we need to do more intentionally to grow certain programs? And I think what we can agree on is the vision and the mission that um, whether it's a year or six years, our kids are better when they are a part of Broken Arrow Athletics. And so we want to create those opportunities uh, because we know how important it is. We know what they learn along the way. So the more opportunities we have, the more kids that we can have involved. Um, as Mr. Ellett mentioned, the OSSA with the emerging sports policy, um, that's going to come down to 481 schools in the OSSA saying um, two thirds of us have palm and dance. And so why would we let an outside group come in and host a state competition? We can adopt that as an emerging sport. The schools already have these, these programs in place. And it's just another opportunity for our kids to be involved uh, at a high level. So that's one, for instance, stunts, a, a sport that continues to grow. Um, girls wrestling is growing in large numbers across the country. It's not a new sport. Wrestling's a sport. It would just be a new division. So probably wouldn't be a part of this 
uh, new policy. I think it's just going to be a new division that's going to open up so many avenues to young ladies in our district. Um, it truly is a growing sport internationally and Oklahoma being maybe the next state, I think the 10th state to adopt it as a, as a sanctioned sport. So excited about that. The National Federation of High School Sports, um, they have partnered with PlayVS. Esports is a huge thing. If you get on YouTube and look it up, they're selling out arenas. It's basically virtual gaming. Uh, this year, PlayVS, I think, is using League of Legends. And instead of going in gyms and, and fields, they're in computer labs, and they're competing against teams from all over the world. Um, and so we think that there are hundreds of kids on our high school campus and below uh, who would jump all over that. So um, not necessarily an athletics uh, sport because it, it, it's not sanctioned yet, but, you know, we can – be the ones to get out there in front of it and grow it and get kids hooked up, involved on a team, learning strategies and commitment and all those things that we think are important. So, yeah. And then our recommendations, last slide here, just another year of implementation. This is just a snapshot of, uh, of how we're trying to be intentional about growing our programs and, and trying to bring awareness to the ones that aren't growing at the same rate. So uh, we'll just continue to, to get those surveys out and get responses from from the kids and parents in our community and try to continue to move forward on this strategic plan 2.0. Any questions from athletics? Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Dr. Dale. The action item for fine arts was that each area of fine arts will have a free program, concert, or clinic in which older students can demonstrate and mentor to younger students. We believe that fine arts real strength lies in that area of engagement and that if we can recruit and retain the most students possible that we can have an effect on engagement. Uh, this year of the approximately 19,000 students that are in Brokenair Public Schools, 16,682 of them are in a fine arts program. That's an 88% participation rate. In grades six through 12, over the last five years, we've increased participation by 2,300 students. That's a 71% increase over those five years. We identified 14 ways in which we can increase engagement by mentoring older students and younger students. Over the last two years, we have created adaptive art and adaptive dance those programs connect our special ed population with regular ed peer tutors. They're really magical classes to be in. They're good for everybody involved in them. This next year, we're hoping to uh, start up an adaptive drama class, and then the year after that, an adaptive music class. We are also continuing our Empty Vols program. Again, we use upper level art students that peer with non-art students and special ed populations to create the bowls that go with that charitable event. And finally, one that you might not think of, but the district musical. We will have 80 students from all over Broken Arrow, all ages that are involved in that. And the BAHS advanced drama students mentor, coach, and eventually run the entire production. We, we have created lots of different ways in different areas that are going to address this. Any Is questions? That the Mary Poppins thing last year? Yep. I went to that. That was awesome, too. We're doing <laughs> Seussical this year. Um, Seussical the musical. So there's going to be another, another push for literacy involved with that also. Very cool. Right. Very nice. Thank you. Awesome. Good evening, I'm Christian Wellborn, um, and in student activities, our action plan was to develop and implement a comprehensive plan to increase engagement opportunities for all students. Um, I think one of the most important areas in which we've grown and, um, and grown, grown our engagement opportunities is in our leadership class offerings. Um, those of you that know Mr. Jadamski, he's, he did an amazing job during his time here. Um, when he came, we had one leadership class that was about five years ago. Uh, we grew from one to two, and then two to four, four to six, um, six to eight, and eight to ten. So currently, um, each day at the high school, we have ten leadership classes. So that means we have 270 students enrolled in that class um, as an elective each day. 
And one thing that um, I learned from him and that we talk about a lot is uh, trying to reach that goal of 10% of our student population at the high school in leadership. And we're getting very close. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged by the numbers and um, I would say that probably the most important thing about that is that it's become a pathway for engagement. Um, we're finding that it's uh, become a way for students to connect with others, to find other opportunities to be engaged. Um, sometimes it just draws them in, gives them a family to be a part of. Um, and so I feel very strongly um, about our leadership program and, and feel very fortunate that we have that at, at our school. And I will, I will tell you also, um, I don't know of another school district in our state that has this kind of program. And I don't take credit for that. Um, I give that to Mr. Jadamski and also our leadership and, and to you guys for allowing us to, to staff that. So thank you very much for that. Um, the next part I want to talk about is the student mentoring. Um, our students, our student <coughs> leaders at the high school, love any opportunity to, to connect with younger students and staff across the district. Um, a group of them came to me this year um, and they have asked to go out to our elementary sites and read to classrooms or students one-on-one, -on -one, just um, either way, whatever the principals feel is most important for their site. So that's something new that we're starting this year with our student council and class officers. Um, another thing that we've done the last couple of years is our leadership day at the Freshman Academy, and that is um, a day where our advanced leadership students, we do have an advanced class, they um, develop from start to finish um, the day for our freshmen. We have about a hundred, a little over a hundred students that come. Um, and they talk to them about leadership on campus. They talk to them about what that would look like at the high school. Um, it's just sort of an introduction to being a leader um, at the high school level and getting them um, associated with kind of what goes on at the high school and giving them some familiar faces. And I would say that another important thing that we do is our middle school and freshman student council um, days that we do in the fall. We bring our middle school and freshman uh, student councils to the high school. And again, our students plan this from start to finish. Um, I think I say there's a lot of things about my job that are my favorite, but um, one of my favorites would be um, watching our students develop and execute. Um, these kinds of activities. It's, it's amazing what they're allowed to do, what they can do um, when you just give them the tools and let them run. So I'm um, very excited to continue to grow our mentoring opportunities um, at the high school level and, and extend them into our, our lower sites. Any questions? Thank you. I probably should say that this is ongoing. I don't know that we'll ever complete this. We want to continue to grow, to grow our program. Too far. You want to go back? I knew I shouldn't have touched it. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we needed to do also was create an engagement committee, and we did so. We created a committee with. Uh, we have met several times already, and we're getting to meet again. Um, there's 15 people on this committee, uh, made up of teachers and administrators, and uh, there's some things we wanted to look at when we're looking at engagement for our district. Um, one of the things is currently there are about a hundred active clubs going on in our elementary schools right now. And when I say approximately, because clubs start and finish all the time, there's some that go three or four weeks and they stop and new ones start. So it's kind of an ongoing uh, process as far as the number of clubs we have out there. But I do want to give some kudos to our uh, elementary principals and our elementary uh, PE teachers. And I have had, I've had an opportunity this first semester to go out and sit down with every elementary principal and visit with that elementary principal what are the in, uh, clubs and activities they've got going on at their schools, what are the things that uh, uh, other schools are doing, look at some ideas, talked about some things, thought it was a very productive time, but uh, uh, having a chance to um, look at what all the other schools are doing is going to be a very important part and this committee gives us a chance to come together, talk about what are the things that we, uh, everybody else is doing and we also looked at all those clubs. There's some that are very popular. I mean, they're running clubs, very popular. Uh, a bot ball, very popular. Uh, kindness type club basically comes different names, but a kindness where they're teaching kids responsibility and how they treat other people are all very uh, important clubs. But 
uh, and they're all really good clubs. There's some that are just uh, that you someone who does and it kind of just works. And one of them, for example, there's one of the elementary schools that has a club that's called Exploring. And basically what they did is they opened it up to their teachers and said, anything that you want to do a club on, move over here, anything that you want to do a, an activity on, we're going to invite you to do that. And so they've had teachers and they take about five or six teachers at a time and they go for four weeks and they go for one day a week and they pick anything from, it can be uh, weaving, it can be uh, chest, it can be gardening, it can be basically anything. And they've literally gotten where they can't hardly get enough teachers to keep up with the number of kids that want to get involved in these programs. And part of that, I believe, is because the kid, the teachers are doing something that they're really passionate about, they're really excited about. And they're volunteering their time to do these either after school, before school, uh, whatever time they do it. But uh, because they're passionate about it, I think that passion rubs off on the kids that they're working with. And those kids want to be a rock part of it. And what happens after that four weeks is over with, then they bring another five or six teachers in to start that all over again. And I know there's two or three other schools that have started doing the same thing. And I think that's really going to be a very... Uh, a very popular program, but it, it gives you some ideas of things that we can do in the future. We have also, one of the things we've talked about in the committee is uh, what can we do to entice teachers to want to do more clubs, to do more activities? What kind of rewards can we give them? And we kind of started this out with a couple of criteria. Let's not we're not going to charge the students anything to be involved in these clubs, and obviously we're not going to charge the school anything to do these clubs. These, these are clubs we're trying to do at no cost, and uh, some of the things we came up with are very simple things like maybe a blue jean day because you're involved in these kind of activities, uh, maybe where they can work out a deal where uh, they have a few less duties or uh, they're able to take an hour off be earlier one day because they work it out with the other teachers, but just sitting around and brainstorming well what things could we do to make this a better situation for the teachers so they want to do these things i mean our goal is to have a hundred percent engagement and uh, we've got to reach out there and find some things that we can do that'll make that come uh, make that work out and be something that we can get done any questions thank you nice thank work. you <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. A uh, special welcome to my leadership BA colleagues who are all voluntarily here. Uh, you picked a great one. <laughs> this is Strategic Plan 2.3, and we're developing a plan to integrate families and community into the district culture. Year one, uh, we did a lot of homework. We're trying to build relationships with community organizations, businesses, nonprofits, other groups to support our students and engage with that community. And so in year one, we really had to look at what have we done before? what worked well, what didn't work, why did we stop doing it? And then also, who is doing it well? You know, we don't always have to reinvent the wheel with this. So if there are other districts who are doing things that are working, let's talk to them and let's look into that. Then let's also look at what our kids need because every school is a little bit different even though you think about elementary, secondary, high school, even different elementary schools have different needs. So we worked with teachers on that. Um, we came up with Engage BA as a name for our partnership. We're still working on that. Um, my favorite thing that we've done so far is we established this Hometown Heroes partnership with Quick Trip and the Folds of Honor Foundation. And that recognizes a military service member and their family who was killed or wounded defending our freedom in Iraq and Afghanistan. One of those per home football game. And that's really a living example of our core values, especially that one that says we're a student focused relationship driven school district. We strive to engage our students in our community through kindness, compassion, and empathy. Um, we roll out the red carpet for those families on that night. It's awesome. They get the full deal in the varsity club. They watch the game from the sidelines. They're recognized in front of a full house, standing ovation almost every time. Uh, we have custom challenge coins, which are a huge deal in the military. We give each family one of those and a commemorative football. Um, it's been awesome just to hear the reaction from these families. A lot of times we still stay in touch because we've got to mail them something or we just keep that relationship going. And a couple of quotes that came in, you have these in your handouts, but one said, we were humbled and honored by the amazing hospitality and kindness we received. I wanted to thank you personally for your patience and coordination to make that evening one my family will forever be grateful for and never forget. And another one told me, uh, your kindness and hospitality from all was very comforting and we appreciate it so much. 
you brought tears to my eyes yet again, and I'm just so humbled by you all. And so if you, if you remember back to football season, not all of our hometown heroes were still with us. One had passed away from cancer. One was very sick. One has been uh, severely injured and wasn't able to be there himself. So we had his family. And so just to wrap our arms around those families, that by extension is, a, is an example for other families. And we hope to do more of that in the future. This year, we're working on candidates for a community development coordinator. We just interviewed a couple of them on Friday. I think we have a potential option. I'm going to keep digging a little bit. So that's responsible for managing and creating really our Engage BA program to partner these schools with the community and also get with businesses to work on career pathways. Now we're researching and identifying potential partners. I just had one call while we were standing up here, so maybe I'll stand up here a little longer and see if we can get some more call. But, uh, and then we're trying to figure out how to assess the impact of Engage BA. What, what does that look like successfully at the end? Um, we're still working, as you can imagine, because we don't have the coordinator of community development yet, so we're gonna need a little bit more time on that just to develop our short and uh, long-term goals. Spento, what am I leaving out? So I was just gonna say, um, I was just here because he was nervous. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the, the exciting thing about this is I think there's so many resources that are untapped with our connections to the community, not only in financial resources, but really the engagement of getting people involved through career pathways, through um, volunteer time, through any way that someone wants to give and partner with us. We've had this in the past. It's changed and morphed. I think Engage BA is going to have a new look and a new um, revitalization as to what it can do. And I think having the right person in the right role is really important. The one thing I love about what we're doing is we've said from the beginning, we're not going to hire somebody to a date. We're going to hire the right person for this job. And that search will end when that person walks in the door. Um, actually, we had a, we've had some great candidates we've talked to and it's exciting. but. Um, this is like super passionate for me and I know Charlie's been that way too because of all the stuff he's taken on his plate just to keep it kind of rolling and the research we've done the things that other places are doing are exciting but I think ours is going to be unique because we're going to take you know the, the BA way and the BA culture and this person's got to really learn about that first and understand who we are they've got to engage with people in the community get to know people shake hands um, create a relationship with them and that takes a special person so um, I love that we're not just jumping in with whatever comes our way but really wait until the right person comes to us so that's probably the, <laughs> the best thing I think we could do for this job and and I think it'll pay off in so many ways it has nothing to do with money but just in how we can get people involved and the resources we could tap into with our kids right here in our our great town so that's it I I have something that I'd like to say regarding this matter. Uh, it's no accident. We've been very purposeful as a school district. And with that purpose, it requires every employee to buy into that mission, the vision. Uh, and I know, obviously, uh, coming in on the board, having a strategic plan and having uh, certainly our action plan so that our employees and certainly the board as part of that, we're all part of this team. And I, I like what Mr. Allen said early <coughs> on in the board meeting in that the board, yes, we have a different function, but ultimately we're on the same team with all of our school administration, our staff member support, or our certified staff. It does not matter. And I think that's the beauty of how far we have gone, uh, first initially beginning the strategic plan and having a student engagement and being very purposeful in it. We can already see from a communications perspective how much we have grown. But I think the important thing is we're all committed to it. We just need to make sure no matter what we do, that it stays uh, an integral part of the organization's culture. And we look at the core values, and I totally support having core values and having that ingrained in the organization. So when you have new employees, when you have new board members, they understand what those values are and their mannerisms, their conduct, the way people handle themselves out in the community is a reflection of our expectations. That can never be left behind and it requires leadership. That means leadership is within every single one of us to ensure that it gets done. I'm very passionate about this, but I have seen school districts who lose sight 
of the most important things. And when they lose sight of that, it becomes more about I mm -hmm. instead of more about we. I do believe we've done a fantastic job in becoming more about we as an organization, and I want to encourage each of us to continue uh, keeping that as our focus. And if we do that, uh, we're never going to have to go back to a point in time where we ask ourselves, how did we get here? Because that, that motivation and our purpose drives us continually within our organization to remain committed to doing the right thing each and every day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank every one of you for the update. Yep. Great job. Next item, number 12. Is it, is it Ms. Hennis? Yes. All right. I didn't butcher that. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Allen and the board. I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about an upcoming opportunity for us to start a new early childhood program called um, Multi-Age Program. And it's a combination class of pre-K and kindergarten. And they would be housed at Park Lane ECC and Aspen Creek ECC. Um, the multi-age um, the benefits of multi-age, the research goes back for over 40 years of research, just the benefits of building a classroom culture, allowing opportunities for young students to learn from older students and older students to develop some really strong leadership um, opportunities and leadership skills and just to um, have a great um, a great oppor I mean, opportunity for social emotional development. And um, so we have, the reason for this program is kind of twofold. Luckily, or we have a wonderful problem, I would say, of how fast we're growing in Broken Arrow. And so Highland Park and Aspen Creek Elementaries are our, our fastest growing schools. And so Park Lane ECC, um, if we could have four, multi-age classrooms there, we can really, we can have 40 kindergartners stay at Park Lane ECC, and that would help out Highland Park Elementary. And then at Aspen Creek, we'll have two multi-age classrooms and help um, 20, have 20 kindergarten students stay at Aspen Creek ECC and help the, the um, population at Aspen Creek Elementary. So I provided for you kind of a flow chart just to help with the visual, because it's a, a lot of shuffling of students. But um, in one of the big questions is, um, what are, are we gonna lose pre-K spots? So our pre-K program is um, a, a very high priority, so we don't wanna lose any pre-K spots. Um, currently, we have a solo site at Rhodes that has been very successful. And so we're going to have 40, spots open up at Liberty for pre-K only, so move two classrooms to Liberty, and then we're gonna have one classroom at Linwood. So it'll open up or have an opportunity for those families that live within walking distance of those elementaries that um, transportation to pre-K is an issue, they would be able to um, have their students participate in the program. Um, in, so the process thus far was I wrote a letter to all the families at Park Lane ECC whose children we know are going to Highland Park, and then a letter to all the families whose children we know are going to Aspen Creek Elementary next year for kindergarten, and sent them a letter talking about the program and giving them the opportunity to volunteer um, for that program. Um, we have not had a lot of family, we have had a lot of questions, which has been great. Um, I just think it's different, it's outside the box, and so um, I think they're just nervous about the kickoff part of that. So we, I sent a follow-up email, email with um, some FAQs and I provided that document for you guys so you could kind of see some of the questions that I was getting. Um, and then tomorrow night, um, I'm gonna be having, we're meeting with the families. We open it up for anyone that wants to go to Park Lane and just to ask questions and I think face-to-face -face hearing about the program will be good for them. And then Aspen Creek ECC, we're gonna do that on Thursday night. Um, do you have any questions? Well, 
I know uh, something like this as you begin, yes, there are a whole lot of questions. I want to thank you for remaining open to those questions because that's critical for our parents. Uh, you know, they have to feel it as though it's safe, you know, yes. to be able to move out towards that end. But I have every confidence, given how you're proceeding thus far, that uh, we will have parents who are willing to move forward and understand that it is a tremendous benefit to them. Well, thank you. So I saw one of the questions on there was size of class. So it won't exceed the 20 no. per class like we currently have at right. our ECCs. Right. One teacher per 10 kids, is that what I'm reading here? Yes, oh, it's um, a certified teacher and a and right. then teacher's right. assistant. And then there will only be 10 pre-K students and then 10 kindergarten student, students, so a maximum of 20. Then the next year when those kindergarten students that are in there, when they go to Highland Park, or Aspen Creek, they will go there as first graders. And then those pre-K students that are there, those 10 pre-K students that are in there will then roll, stay in the same class and be the kindergarten students there next year. And we'll have a deeper understanding of the skills and be able to teach those other students or be and really good leaders. obviously you'll have a lot of learnings along the way. Right. And make those modifications. Growing pains are good. Yes. <coughs> Who else is doing this? Do you know? Public schools? Yeah. I don't know of a public school that's doing it. I, um, but it's similar to what Undercroft Montessori does or what you see at Riverfield. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll, it'll be a great venture. So we'll be the first. Yes. <laughs> and it would like be. I know that you have every confidence given the research that it'll work, but also as a school system, we're open if we see modifications that require us to move away from it as well. Right. So we're, we're open either way. Right. Yes. Okay. So, because we're going to field the questions when they, the, really the complaints. <laughs> well, because I'm just thinking. Yeah, my number two. Number. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> when that group rolls through and the pre-K rolls up, is it just first come first serve on the next fill in those spots for, for the, the next the next pre-k yeah um yes and it'll be the I'm, same I'm like thing for now. this it'll if so if we have after these meet and greets on uh -huh. tuesday and thursday if we have more than 40 families at park lane that want to take advantage of the program then we'll have to randomly select and that was all in the letter to them to let them and know that but it'll be the instead same instead of thing. randomly will you have a process of how you should elect since we so we can we those students because <laughs> i mean were you the first one signed up the last one signed up how the, you know so we can be able to explain when that parents po'd so why did my kid get in i was there the first sign up and i'm first out i mean will right. we be able to know what that Yes. Process, we'll, like process is, I will give it to you step by step. Okay. So that way, yeah. No, I think that's great. That's in my district, so <laughs> I'm going to get calls. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be prepared to give them the yes. information. So, or your email or phone would be fine. <laughs> okay, that's why I want me well, to. Glad you're on the board. Appreciate that. <laughs> and so hopefully, I mean, hopefully it will all work out so that we can have that flexibility to help out um, Highland Park and. Aspen Creek Elementaries for next year. So will we look to do this at other, after, I mean, are we gonna do this a, uh, uh, just a temporary, or what do you call that, a uh, pilot, pilot program, and then we're gonna go district-wide with it? Is that the intention? I mean, what's have, the? Right now, I just want it to be we, successful. <laughs> I want to, I want to get through the successful part of it so that we can back every decision that we make, and then when we, expand it i mean the sky's the limit for us i feel like especially in our early childhood programs I agree. Mm -hmm. okay good deal thank Any you other thank questions you. thank you no. thanks next item will be the consent items 14 through 45. move to approve the general consent agenda items 14 through 45. second hold on here oh, mine just showed up for sure maybe i went to sleep Man with the answer. 
There you go. Okay. You do it all these. Shut me down over there. Yeah. We're ready. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell. Yes. Miss Kelly. Yes. Mr. Denton. Yes. Mr. Majors. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. We know. I don't have a voting vote. We're waiting to move forward. Just one minute. The there we go. There she sits. I think Elliot did it when he was messing around or something. Can you vote? Yeah, I'm not sinking right now. Okay. Yeah, mine's not synced up just yet. Bring it on, Bob. I have a. Are you good? I have a manual. We good? I'm good. Yeah. You want to go yeah, it's not giving me the. I have it manually okay. too. All right, next item 46, Mr. Tolomeo. Good evening, President Allen, members of the board. I'm here to seek your approval from Third Generation Electric uh, to accept their bid for relocating and upgrading lights at the uh, Memorial <coughs> Stadium and then the alternate number two to move the existing lights at Memorial Stadium to the track and field. This is part of a large project to upgrade. Um, the emergency lights out at <coughs> Memorial Stadium and some of them will be put on battery backup on the underneath level and we'll have uh, egress lights out of the stands as well. So we're replacing them. Excuse me, Cheryl, go ahead. I had a question related to the lights that are going to the track. Mm -hmm. That is the track at the high school, is that correct? Yes, it okay. is. The track and field at the high school, part of that project, we um, put all the infrastructure in the ground to support lights. We just weren't able yeah. to afford new lights out there. That's, I just needed to know. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steve. No, yeah. that's fine. I had one more um, uh, question, or not really a question, a comment. Um, the lights that will be out there at Memorial Stadium will certainly improve the lighting uh, for the play. We are actually m moving them behind the stands right. um, about to the 30 yard line where they're most ideally located and it will improve not only the lights on the stands but if you've ever been or lights in the on the field but if you've ever been in our stands mm -hmm. we, uh, that field was designed to have very, very <coughs> little spillover onto the stands well it's great much. for play but it's not great for supervising and mm -hmm. uh, monitoring kids that are in the stands so this so is this is going to be something that will be extremely functional for all activities out there at Senior High at Memorial Stadium, and then it will provide our track and field, in the, uh, or even other things there. They could practice in the evening mm -hmm. or have those for events. Yes, okay. and it um, it will bring our uh, stands up to a appropriate level as well. When will this all be done? This will be done. Um, uh, four to six months from once I get your approval, our goal is to hit the the end of June in time for the band function in mid-July. Okay. Mr. Tomey, do, do we require these people with this size of bid to have a bond? They, they have a uh, bid bond and then they'll have a payment and performance bond as well. Okay. Thank you. You ever done any work with him? Third generation is uh, the electrician that did all of the uh, electrical work out at Timber Ridge. Hmm. They've had a couple of other uh, smaller projects with us as a subcontractor, but Timber Ridge is probably there. Is this a big deal for them, a big project? or? It's a big deal for a lot of electrical companies, yeah. but it, they've done, they said they've done about a hundred and something of these lighting upgrades, and they're currently doing about 12 of them at various stages. Um, they are, uh, I've called some of their references and they're actually the preferred uh, bidder for, for the lighting uh, that we actually received. And with the lighting, we also get a 30 year warranty. Um, so they are responsible if the light goes out, they will come change the ballast uh, because, because we are going to LED, they'll change the ballast uh, at zero cost to the district. Well, the reason I ask that is because it sounds like you've got a pretty tight time frame here. Yes. Yes, very, very tight time. They're going to be able to deliver frame. on that. Yes, <laughs> they, 
they did. Uh, they were one of the few contractors that uh, put in a schedule within their bid, hmm. and so I feel pretty confident with this. Good. It'd be difficult to play that first football game with no line. <laughs> yeah. it, would, it would. Or be have difficult. that first I band. <laughs> or the band contest. Uh, the drums of summer. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it would. Time. It would be nearly impossible to do it without lights on the field. Okay. Well, this should improve improve clarity too, from the perspective of TV. Yes. Streaming. Yes. So that's going to be a good thing too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Currently, we are at the minimum value that they will televise our game. We're at about 65, 70 foot candles on the field, and their ideal is 75. But they have televised our games before, but. Um, so this will put us at the 112 foot candle average on our field. So we will be significantly brighter. So if anybody asks, this is bond funds, right? This is building funds. This building is remaining and bond. bond. Yes, this is remaining building and bond funds. Right. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Mm -hmm. okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell. Yes. Miss Kelly. Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tolman. Next item, Ms. Peterson. I still don't have voting buttons. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good evening, President Allen and members of the board. I'm here um, seeking your approval for the purchase of Being a Writer. Being a Writer is the companion to Making Meaning. Um, we purchased Making Meaning over the course of last year utilizing instructional bond funds and RSA funds. So through this purchase, um, I was also able to purchase last year fifth grade being a writer. So this purchase will cover every classroom except for 33 kindergarten classrooms. I'll make that purchase out of instructional bond fund July 1. So at the beginning of next year, we will have a complete reading and writing curriculum that can be um, resourced with our elementary OERs. Questions? Make a motion to approve. Second. And a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item, 48, Ms. Brassfield. Hello, good evening, um, President Allen and member of the board. I'm asking for acceptance and approval for the purchase of 111, or 109 Chromebooks and 116 Yoga Flips for various title sites um, to the amount of $284,789 to be paid for out of Title I funds. Questions? Move approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, 49, Metabolis. Good evening. My first item are the, uh, is the encumbrance report. Uh, for December 6th through January 10th, we have $1,480,000. $319.43 in encumbrances, and I would request your approval of those encumbrances. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Next item, number 15. Mr. Next Allen. item is the change order report and for the same period of time, we show reflect a decrease of $125,000. I would like to request your approval of the change orders. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item 51, Ms. Enoff. Good evening. The activity fund reports uh, for the month of December receipts total $4,316,000, disbursements total $3,124,000 with an ending cash balance of $4,270,000. Questions? Thank you. Next item. The treasurer's reports as of the end of December, cash balances report report reflects a total of $33,295,000 in assets. Investment ledger shows district investments of 21990000 <coughs> 
and the collateral report show a total of $39,607,000 in collateral pledged to Broken Arrow Public Schools. Deposits requiring collateral are $23,230,000 with an available balance of collateral of $16,376,000. Questions? Okay. Thank you. Next item, Ms. Hina. These are the monthly financial reports through the end of December. December is typically a um, month where we are really watching our spending um, due to our cash flow sh situation. You can see state aid um, has come in um, as projected. I'll go ahead and report to the board and um, you'll see this reflected in next month's reports. But our midterm allocation for state aid came in at about $53 million. This was a decrease from the initial allocation that the district received in August, primarily due to a very large um, jump in our ad valorem um, net assessed valuation. And so anytime the district sees growth in its property taxes um, through the formula, um, what's called equalization works out and that's um, deducted from our state aid. You'll also see um, our ad valorem um, tax collections reflected next month as um, we did receive both Tulsa and Wagner County payments um, earlier this month. Building fund, again, um, ad valorem is the main source of revenue for this fund. And child nutrition, all of her um, payments in both local sources, state and federal claims are coming in um, as projected. Our general fund expenditures, obviously salaries and benefits are the largest component of this um, fund. We um, are on track with our projections for um, the uh, state mandated teacher pay raise and um, also with the stipend dis disbursement um, earlier this fall. And building fund projections, again, um, the salaries increase that you see in building fund um, are on the support side as uh, many of our custodians and uh, maintenance workers are paid from building fund and child nutrition she continues to be self-sufficient in um, paying her salaries um, all of her supply material <coughs> food expenses as well as um, workers compensation expenses and um, as the year continues to wind down we'll um, monitor our ending fund balance for the end of the year May I answer any questions? No. No questions. Thank you. Next item. My next item is to ask the board to approve a resolution in de uh, determining our uh, bond sale date for general obligation bonds in the amount of $42,500,000. Um, we go through this exercise every spring to sell general obligation bonds, and these bonds fund a variety of projects um, throughout the district. Um, very important, our annual allocations are funded from these bond funds for instructional maintenance, transportation, um, fine arts, athletics. All of these different programs receive um, part of these bonds that we're going to sell. Our financial advisor has given us a couple of dates uh, to set that special board meeting in February. And if you recall, this is a noon um, meeting, so we can have the meeting while the markets are open and we can receive bids into the district. The first date is February 21st, and the second date is February 26th. Either one of those are fine. I'm good with either one. Yeah, me too. Do we want to go the 21st to, to get it done? Does that work for you, John? No good? 26th better? Okay. 25th. Oh, that's. Be the. On that Thursday? The 21st would be Thursday at noon. Uh, are you sure? Okay. Does that work for the 21st at noon? Work yeah. for everybody? Yeah, it should be okay. Well, I need a motion to re reflect that. All right. You can um, send that out, Debbie. And Debbie will yes. send it out. Uh, I move that the board set uh, February the. <coughs> let me go back here. I, February the 21st at noon as a special meeting date for to approve the approve or disapprove the resolution determining the maturities of and setting a setting that date and time i shouldn't say that let me start over <laughs> um okay so piecemeal let's set the 
I move to set the date uh, for the sale of bonds to be February the 21st at noon, period. There you go. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Next and item, 55. My last item is to ask the board to approve or disapprove joining the Oklahoma um, Tax Commission lawsuit with some of our uh, neighboring districts. Just as a reminder, this came about earlier this fall when um, judgment was passed down um, to the district in a um, calculation error on our um, district's motor vehicle collections. Um, Norman Public Schools and more public schools have really led the charge in this and we appreciate their efforts and they have secured legal representation to move forward um, in um, how this plays out and they have found an attorney in the Oklahoma City area. Um, his name is Mr. Andy Lester from Spencer and Fane. Um, they have an office in the Oklahoma City area and they're the two districts really leading the charge in this. And um, as one of the affected districts, um, we have been asked if we want to join in their pursuit of um, this moving forward. The alternative is um, if we choose to do nothing, um, we understand from correspondence with the Tax Commission that our monthly payments will start to be reduced um, beginning in February. Uh, Christine, if what's that total amount that we would have to pay back? Over a period of 13 months, about $789,000. How long did it take them to figure out this issue? This started playing out 2014-15 um, timeframe. Um, it was corrected sometime in 2016, and so the 13 months that they're alleging um, was miscalculated. That's the uh, payback time schedule that the um, court and the tax commission has agreed upon. Ms. Enoff, was this underpayment over 20 years, or 20 years approximate? Well, the calculation error, I, I believe, was they're alleging was within that 13 months. Um, we have requested to actually see the calculation on the repayment and the overpayment during that period. And I did receive that in my office today, and um, it is not exactly clear on how those numbers were formulated. Basically, I received an Excel spreadsheet with three different lines on it with no explanation or no way to really audit those figures. Um, so it will require a little bit more um, collaboration on our part. <coughs> well, I, I think the important thing here is we're taking the prudent steps as a school district to ensure that uh, our students are not impacted to the extent that there was an oversight on the state's uh, part on the Oklahoma Tax Commission uh, to submit to us that we were going to have to pay this money back in a short period of time. We want to make sure. So I appreciate the fact that we're doing this. And uh, uh, outside of that, I know there's been a lot of information regarding this, but thank you. I appreciate it. Well, like I said, our colleagues um, over in Moore and Norman have really led the charge in this, and we, we definitely appreciate their efforts in um, securing legal representation and um, helping to coordinate some of the meetings and the communication. but. There are several affected districts in this area. In Tulsa County, we're not the only ones, um, but the board would need to decide if we want to pursue this further or... Um, just pay the money? Just pay it out. Uh, uh, what could we have done as a district different to avoid the underpayment? Well, I believe the, um, and I'm not an attorney and I don't pretend to be one, but I believe the um, argument going forward would just be that the affected districts were not afforded due process in any of the um, legal proceedings up to this. We weren't involved in the calculation dis discussion. We weren't involved in the time period being discussed of the um, error and just really um, the communication or lack thereof on the part of the tax commission has been very disappointing. Um, our first notification of this was an article that appeared in the Tulsa World and then Dr. Dunlop received um, an, a letter um, early in December um, basically stating uh, about a year and a half worth of legal proceedings and said, oh, by the way, your district owes about 789000 
uh, payment reduction will begin in January. But there's nothing we could have done as a district to figure out if we didn't pay enough or not pay enough. That, I mean, I mean that's the tax commission's right, role. Right. When I monitor payments um, at, that we get from the tax commission, from the state department, we look for variances and we look for oddities, um, you know, and spikes and variances, just like any auditor would do. And everything that we had received through that time period was completely consistent with um, payments that we had received in the past. So there was no reason for any alarm or question on our part as to there being a problem. Ms. Enid, so our public is aware, uh, we say the approximate cost to the district for the litigation. At this time, we're saying initially as we move into it, it's 5,000, but it could potentially be more. Is that correct? It could potentially be more. This uh, figure was based upon if all of the undersigned districts decide to move forward with litigation, um, split among 10 districts, um, if you will. So that's a very approximate cost. Obviously, we'll know more as um, we get heavier into it. But it'd be a heck of a lot cheaper than not asking for our due process and just laying down and paying 700000 We're concerned from a district perspective okay. at the precedent this would set as far as um, us not having a voice at sure. the table on how this was decided, um, how the calculation was decided, and just the overall precedent it sets by being able to deduct payment um, due to an error on someone else's behalf. What do you think our chances are? Um, I Honestly, I think if enough districts get involved, it'll um, start to make some noise. And with the legislative session um, starting very quickly, we're hoping that some of our legislators pick up on this and can um, help us in that avenue as well. Well, and I think that's a very good point in that there should be some form of statute of limitations as it relates to coming back to a district. If the error certainly was made on their behalf, um, it's surely that there are other funds that they can allocate to take care of their errors. I'm very concerned about the precedent it sets because when we received those monies over the 15, 16, 16, 17 school year, we spent those monies in good faith for our students at the time and um, to reduce payment and this largest sum would do nothing but to harm and undermine the education of our current students that we're charged with educating right now. Because there's laws that pro prohibit you from making <coughs> current payments on previous bills or expenditures, correct? We live by that law every single day. Right. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay, I move approval. Wait, I got one last question. Oh, okay, sorry. Would this come from the sinking fund or general fund on the payment if we had to pay the 700000 It would come from our general fund. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm. Even though it's a judgment? Correct. Wow. You already made a motion, correct? Yes. Yeah, motion. Second. And a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Ina. Thank you. Uh, new business. We have none. Next item will be to move to executive session. Make a motion to move to executive session. Second. Motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell. Make sure you don't take yes. that. <laughs> Sorry. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. Oh, yes. Mr. Denton. Yes. Mr. Majors. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Move we return from executive session. Second. And a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Cockrell. Here. Ms. Ms. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Denton. Yes. Mr. Majors. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Next item, statement of executive session by the board clerk. The Board of Education and Michelle Bergwall entered into executive session at 7.26 p.m. to discuss the purchase or appraisal of certain real estate property in accordance with Oklahoma statute title 25 OS section 307 B3 of the Oklahoma Open Meeting Act. The Board of Education and Michelle Bergwall returned to open session at 7.56 p.m. This constitutes the minutes of the executive session. Okay, next item number 60. Move to approve the purchase of certain real estate property and to authorize a chief operations officer to negotiate 
close on the property and to execute the details and purchase of said properties as discussed during executive session and that should be plural okay second motion and a second please call the roll mr cockrell yes miss kelly yes mr denton yes mr majors yes mr allen yes next item will be to adjourn so moved second and motion and second call the roll please mr cockrell yes miss kelly yes mr denton yes mr majors yes mr allen yes